Hi, good morning. We're going to cover Temporal Bone City for beginners today. The temporal bone is the smallest yet the most complex structure we can evaluate on CT. The most basic views would include the coronal view here on top and the eggshell view here at the bottom. To organize our search pattern, we are first going to scroll here through the coronal image. And then we're going to look for the cut where we can see the scutum since this is the attachment of the tympanic membrane. Okay, so here we have the sharp scutum here, the attachment of the tympanic membrane superiorly, and is the landmark separating the outer from the middle ear. Now, vibrations in the air here are collected by the external ear. It is then funneled through the canal and onto the tympanic membrane here. The vibration from the tympanic membrane is then transmitted to the ossicles here, similar to uh, playing a relay. By this, I mean the vibrations from the tympanic membrane going to go to the malleus, malleus to the incus, then incus to the stapes, and the stapes to the oval window. So all of the structures we have mentioned here have all um, a similar goal, which is to bring the vibration outside and bring it all the way here to the oval window. This is what we call air conduction. Now, as the vibration from the state is here, okay, um, is transmitted to the oval window, or in other words, the state is foot plate here would press on the oval window, would be similar to pressing the pedal of a car. Just like this. Now the vibrations are now within or transmitted here within the cochlea. Okay, so vibrations are going to travel in this direction. It's from the oval window, it goes all the way up to the apex of the cochlea on one side. Then from the apex here, from the apex, goes to the other side here, winding all the way down back to the base of the cochlea. Notice here that we have a structure at the base of the cochlea. This is what we call the round, uh, the round window. Yes, the round window bulges outward and because of this bulging outward you have like a bouncing of the fluid wave hence creating uh, movement within <clears throat> within the fluid here stimulating your hair cells okay now this process this entire process whereby the state is foot plate would press on the oval window, the energy traveling through the cochlea, and then bulging into the round window is similar to a hydraulic machine. You can see here that this is a representation of this one steepest foot plate on the oval window, creating or transmitting the vibration here through the fluid within the cochlea. At the base of the cochlea, it encounters here the round window. Round window would bulge, okay? And because of that bulging, okay, you have some movement here in the 
fluid inside. This movement in the fluid would then be a stimulus for stimulating the hair cells. These hair cells would now, are, when stimulated, create the electrical energy transmitted to the vestibular cochlear nerve. So for today, we're going to cover the structures from the outer to the middle ear here. So any anything that impedes the transmission okay, from here, the outside, up to here at the level of the oval window would create a conductive hearing loss. Let us now focus here in the middle ear. The middle ear can be likened to a three-story building. See here that for each floor, you have a prominent resident, except here for the first floor. So let us take a look first at the topmost floor. Okay, In this topmost floor, you have a roof. And this roof is called your tegnan tympani because this Roof would be the border between the middle ear and the meninges in the brain here on top. This roof is important and should be intact. The landmarks which delineate these three floors of the middle ear are called the epitympanum, mesotympanum, and the hypotympanum would be these structures, okay? Now, since the lateral margins here are also the attachments of the tympanic membrane, okay, it's easy to remember the margins of this um, epi, meso, and hypotympanum by remembering the attachment of the tympanic membrane. Now, let's try to identify these structures here on the coronal view on the right. Okay, this is a coronal view. Let us first look for the scutum here and look for the structure here on the medial portion, tympanic cranial nerve 7. Okay, there we have the sharp uh, scutum. And next, we're going to look for the tympanic segment of cranial nerve 7 or facial nerve. Okay. Now, where is the facial nerve coming from? Okay, this is the IAC, internal auditory canal. And take a look here. This soft tissue density comes off and goes to the, here, through the bony labyrinth. So, this is what we call the labyrinthine segment of the cranial nerve 7. Okay, It then loops and then has another um, segment here coursing to the tympanic uh, cavity which is called your tympanic segment of the facial nerve. Notice here that in this cut you see the, wind, uh, the winding cochlea here similar to a snail with two eyes. This is the snail shell. These are the two eyes, tympanic segment, and this one is the labyrinthine segment. This uh, tympanic segment is the medial margin of the epitympanum, scutum, tympanic segment of the facial nerve. Okay? We follow the facial nerve, we see it here. So this is the epitympanum. Now, what about this one? Tympanic annulus and cochlear promontory. Cochlear promontory is right here. Scrolling a bit here. Okay. This is the cochlea, right? Scroll a bit. And you see here the cochlear promontory. Cochlear promontory. Then the inferior margin of the attachment of the tympanic uh, membrane, we have here this small depression, which is called the 
hypotympanum. In between the epi and the hypo, tympanum would be your mesotympanum. Okay? Now, let's go back here to our drawing, the three-story building. Focusing here on this topmost floor, okay, we see an important resident, the ice cream cone. If we imagine and take a look at this first or the topmost floor, sorry, topmost floor, and take a look at this inferiorly, okay, or get an inferior view to this topmost floor, we're going to see this ice cream and cone appearance. Notice that the apex of the cone is pointing through this door. This door opens to another room. This room is called your mastoid anchor. This is the non-septated large central mastoid air cell. This door to the mastoid antrum is your aditus ad antrum. Now let's take a look at an actual actual image here. This is an actual image through the top floor of our building. Um, can you Locate the ice cream in the cone. This is the ice cream. This is the cone. Apex of the cone pointing to the uh, pointing to the door here or the aditus and antrum, which opens up here to this mastoid antrum. Another important space in the epitympanum is this space here. This space is lateral to the malleus here. Lateral, by, by lateral I mean that it is towards, okay, towards the tympanic membrane. So this is the scutum, right? So we have the tympanic coursing like this. So you can imagine if you have a retraction okay, or an um, enfolding of the portion of the tympanic membrane here, right here, you can have formation of cholesteatoma in this portion lateral, okay, lateral to the neck of the malleus, and this space is called your tussac space. It is a part of the lateral epitympanic space. Now, let's take a look at the residents of the second floor. If we are going to take a look at the second floor here from below, okay, so this is a representation of an inferior view of the second floor in which we'll see this pyramid. This pyramid is called your pyramidal eminence. It has depressions on both sides. And notice that on this cut and just a few adjacent slices, we can also see the stapes. Later, we're going to see the important relation of this stapes and the pyramidal eminence. Now, let's take a look here at an actual actual image. Okay? Um, we're going to identify these depressions on both sides of the pyramidal eminence. Okay, let's look out for this depression lateral to the eminence, and this is called your facial nerve recess. And we have another depression on the other side, the medial portion, the sinus tympani. We know that this is the medial portion because we see here the stapes, the oval window. 
Okay? Here is an actual image. Can you see the stapes? There's a stapes there. And then just a few cuts. Okay? If we follow these depressions, okay, inferiorly, we're going to see something like this. We see the pyramidal eminence, a depression here laterally, which is the facial nerve recess, and another depression here medially, which is the sinus tympani. Notice here that we have here this depression, the facial nerve recess, okay, which is just adjacent to this one. And this one is the mastoid segment of the facial nerve. This sinus tympani is important to examine because it's a clinical blind spot. Cholesteatomas may frequently hide in this um, area. So always check for the sinus tympani and report possible cholesteatomas hiding there. Now, look at this pyramidal eminence here. This one corresponding to this um, picture. It contains something special. This density or soft tissue densities within the pyramidal eminence is this one. This is what we call the stapedius muscle, specifically the tendon and the belly of the stapedius muscle. This stapedius muscle is connected to the stapes. They are connected because the stapedius has something to do with the function of the stapes here, which is to um, press on the oval window, conducting the vibration through, from the tympanic membrane, the ossicles, and to the oval window. So because of this connection, the stapedius is able to control the degree of vibrations transmitted to the oval window. But how? Just imagine, if the stapedius muscle would, would contract or shorten, what will happen to the stapes? Okay, it will get its foot plate um, off the oval window. Less pressing on the oval window or no foot plate pressing on the oval window means no or low transmission of vibration. This is how the stapedius would work to dampen sound. So, so far we have seen the top floor or the epitympanum here represented by this axial cut. The middle floor also here or the meso tympanum. What about the first floor here? As we saw earlier, the hypotympanum is just a small space in depression and doesn't contain much, doesn't have important contents. Now let us practice identifying these two levels here. The epitympanum, um, which contains your ice cream and a cone, or the cone points to the aditus ad antrum. And this one, through a cut, through the mesotympanum, where we can see the stapes, the pyramidal eminence here, and the depressions on its either side. We are going to start here from a superior cut, where we see the superior semicircular canal. So watch out. We're first going to look for the ice cream and the cone appearance. Superior semicircular canal, way more inferiorly, becomes two dots, right? We're looking for, okay, air containing here, middle ear. Looking for the ice cream on a cone appearance. There's the ice cream, there's the cone, cone points to, points to the aditus and antrum, and aditus and antrum opens to the mastoid antrum. Now, let's look for the stapes in the mesotympanum. Stapes here. Okay. 
state is here. Just more fear cut. We see here pyramidal eminence, sinus tympani, facial nerve recess adjacent to the mastoid facial nerve. Now let's bring together the ice cream here and cone closer to the stapes because they are part of the ossicular chain. Recall that this cone here is the incus, specifically the incus body and short process. Okay, uh, for simplicity purposes, we'll just say cone is the incus body. Okay. Larger portion of the incus, larger portion of this cone would be the incus body. Aside from the body and the short process here, we also have other processes of this incus. We have long process and the lenticular process here. It's called lenticular process because it attaches here to the stapes. Because of this connection, the incus connecting to the stapes. This is called the incudostapedial joint. When you have an image, an actual image, through the mesotympanum, in which you see the two dot sign here, the anterior dot would be your a part of your malleus, okay? while the posterior dot would be your incus. You know that this is the incus because you can follow it, okay? If you follow this dot, it's going to connect here to the stapes. Now, this incus in purple would connect to the malleus. And this is what we call the incudo malleolar joint. This malleus then articulates with the tympanic membrane. The malleus articulates with the tympanic membrane via its handle or the manubrium. Okay? So, again, tympanic membrane, malleus, malleus to incus by the incudomalleolar joint, then the incus to the stapes by the incudos, the pedial joint. To drive the point home, let's, is, let's take a look at a 3D image. Okay, outer ear, middle ear, inner ear. But let's just focus here on the middle ear. Just imagine the vibrations from the tympanic membrane here going to the or received by the malleus handle. Malleus then um, transmits the vibration to its malleus head, malleus head to the incus. Incus then um, transfers the vibration to the stapes here. The stapes here has its foot plate pressing on the oval window. Now, um, if we take a look from the inferior uh, inferior aspect, you can see here this one, the ice cream on a cone appearance. This one is the malleus. This one is the incus. Okay. So in summary, in looking at temporal bone studies, try to go through the pathway of the vibrations from the outer to the middle ear. We likened it to a three-story building, the two more important parts of which are the epi tympanum, which houses the manubrium head, the incus body, and short process, while the mesotympanum here would contain the rest of the ossicle parts. This would include your stapes. The mesotympanum also contains the 
pyramidal eminence, which is the landmark to locate its neighbors, the facial nerve recess and the sinus tympani. Thank you very much for listening and I hope to see you again next week.